when he said it was you know three days jet lag, what what that the, the writing was so brilliant. Dave Davis uh, and Lorenzo Music and uh, Patch and Tarset. That sounds like a roof repair team, doesn't it? Patch and Tarset. They're great writers. That was the writing. The right. But once again, you got to give them something. And the first thing they wrote for me was the best thing ever for me to bring your timing in. So I just lucked out. You've got to give them something. I mean, they can't give that. That's what all the greats do. Well, I'm not a great, but all the, the people are there. And I remember the line that got me. I remember the whole thing. It was, it was a, a seminar with this group in the office. And uh, he wanted to bring me Howard Borden to explain. They were terrified of, fly, of flying. And so I could be, make him more relaxed, make him more comfortable. And this, having this timing made them write for me. They never wrote that way for Peter, Jerry, as, as funny as I am, Peter Bonners, but he never gave them anything to write. They never wrote the funny stuff for him. And I remember this thing. He said, they're all standing around. He says, uh, he said Howard, he said, tell him, uh, no, he, Howard's here to explain what the so-and-so. And one had got up, I forgot if it was Jack Wright or somebody got him and says, I don't know what the question was. When, when you go in, like if there's a problem and someone is frightened, if there happens to be some kind of problem, the weather and there's lightning and you're into a, a, tur a tribulation, something like that. What what do you actually do you say to the uh, to you say to the passengers? And I get a tight shot of me. I'm like this. Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking to me. I'm so, and that was from that on. I got, but I even took longer in that one. I took shorter now because we. we did. But I took about nine hours. Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking to me. And right then they saw it. So they start saw the character, and then they start, and their writers were sensational. They wrote great. I didn't have to write for that show. Wrote everything for Jeannie because we had to make it all up. But no, they write. The writing was wonderful. What about that freeloading aspect of your character? Yeah, that's that. That's not quite like me. I must admit that one isn't. I just think the scripts were just written so beautifully. It just, uh, it just playing. Working with Bob was a brilliant straight man. He'd give you everything. And Suzanne Pichette went, and we all liked each other. You know. Everybody, the five we've written, Jack Riley has been a friend for years from back in Cleveland, you know, Baxter and Riley from the radio. So, it, and they were all so classy, you know, and so bright. And it was just a pleasure to go to work. It was just so wonderful, you know. I sound very Pollyanna, but it's true, it was wonderful. What about the storylines between Howard and, and his son, Howie? Uh, that was great, because the kid was great. Whenever you get a kid around there, it was great. The problem is, <laughs> I remember the one, finally one good script I had, I couldn't play it because it was a brilliant scene with my son. It was a wonderful where he wanted to go back to his mother. And I had wished that what happened to me didn't happen to me because that was the best script I ever had. It was a great thing. And I'm always ironing, by the way. But that time, that was the day my son said to me, I was getting divorced. He was staying with me. He said, Dad, you know, I know this is not working. I'm going back to live with Mom. Now I'm doing that scene that night. So, <laughs> I mean... That was probably the worst time of my entire life. I mean, I mean, just hanging on in there and trying to get through that scene. It happened the same day, so that was tough. But it was charming to work with the boy, you know. And I love the character. I love Howard. I really do. I loved him. I loved the work.